I made a video a while ago covering my ideas for upgrades and timetable changes to the south coastline. I also made a series more recently about similar improvements to the other three intercity routes. Lots of people asked if I could do one on the south coast, but I was lazy and deferred to the older video. I had a realisation a few weeks ago though, and I've put a fair bit of work and thought into developing another plan for the south coastline. The current problems with the south coastline are its particularly windy route through the suburbs of South Sydney and on the Illawarra Escarpment, and limited track capacity. The rule to Wollongong is a slight issue, as is the single track past Coniston or Unandera, depending on how you look at it, but by far the biggest constraint is between Hurstville and Sutherland. The 2026 Standard Working Timetable Detailed Changes Report, which is a sensitive document that I'll be not publishing in full, yet, clearly states this, saying, Passengers using T4 services will experience longer journey times, the result of operating a higher number of trains between Sutherland and Hurstville. It estimates various time travel differences, and piecing this together, the average travel time is about 5 minutes longer through this section in next year's draft timetable. There are several fixes to these issues. Two very large-scale projects and a handful of much easier ones, which could be done first to deliver some benefit. In my previous video, and in my leaked medium-term investigation from earlier this year, the focus on improving the Illawarra line was on extending the quadruplication at least as far as Sutherland to fully separate T4 trains from South Coast trains. If you haven't seen my video on the leaked document, the basic idea was for an all-stops metro-style T4 service to run from Cronulla to Bondi Junction on one track pair with a mixture of South Coast Line and Express T4 Waterfall trains to run on the other track pair to Sydney Terminal, with the required new infrastructure being the Sydney Terminal Area Reconfiguration Stage 3, which I talked about in both my dedicated star video and in the leak video, Illawarra Quad Track, extra stabling on the Cronulla branch, and triple track from Sutherland to Waterfall, I presume to allow peak direction South Coast trains to overtake T4 Waterfall trains. The problem with quad track is the cost. That leaked report suggests that quad track is needed within the next 10 years at a cost of between 10 and 20 billion dollars. I'm not fucking joking there, they're quoting the cost of an entire metro line for the Illawarra quad track. But I have an idea. I, being a completely unqualified outsider with absolutely no idea how much this would actually cost, propose using the reserved M6 corridor for a high-speed railway instead. The M6 alignment is a reservation of mostly empty land stretching from Brighton all the way to Loftus. Hey, that's almost exactly where the line needs more capacity. I've actually done some proper work in a professional program called Civil 3D to create a possible alignment, calculating curb speeds and cants to both maximise line speed and minimise cost, within reason. I won't show you how I made it, because it took quite a while, but I did record it and that is now available as a members only bonus video. There's another advantage to this plan. The planned Westmead to Cogra line, which I've made a dedicated video on as well, is designed to be extended to Miranda in the long term. This extension could run in large part alongside the high speed railway. It would also provide an excuse to not put any stations on the high speed line in this section. The metro would handle the more local traffic. A short tunnel would connect to Cogra, with possible surface stations at Monterey, Ramsgate, Son Susi and Tarrant Point, before diving underground again to hook into Miranda. Being next to a high speed line also means the line speeds would be pretty continuously 100km an hour for metro trains, ensuring minimal travel times. Ok, I've teased you enough now, here's my idea for the high speed rail line. Leaving the Illawarra Dive at Everly, a new track stew would put South Coast trains on the Illawarra local lines, the western pair, at as close to 100km an hour as possible. Each ECS would be fitted at least as far as Tempe to allow the highest line speed possible. i have discussed how this works in my ETCS video. At Tempe, significant change would be required. The station would be moved slightly further north, or possibly just closed entirely provided a shared pedestrian bicycle bridge connects to Walleye Creek, and maybe a 15 minute bus route to Sydney, with platforms only on the main lines, the ones T4 trains will use. The freight line junction would be moved much further south, 
constructed just before the bridge over the Cooks River, and a new viaduct would head south off the local lines in the current station site. The high-speed viaduct would be built straight down the middle of the Cooks River with a line speed of 100 km an hour, increasing to 160 as it flies over the Princess Highway, just clipping the Northern River Bank before turning south to meet the M6 reservation. The viaduct runs over the golf course here, and we can use it as an excuse to fuck the golf course off and turn it into a public park. Two birds with one stone, golfers fight me. And straightens out over the golf course, with the line speed reaching its maximum of 250 km per hour. After the M5, it would drop down to run on the level through the fields and the caravan park, which I'm sure could be relocated. Remember, of course, the railway would take up barely any space, so most of the empty land could be returned as parks or social housing once construction is finished. A board tunnel would take the line under some houses and warehouses in Brighton, then surface again. The line might need to go on a short viaduct or run on an embankment or something to reduce flood risk crossing the creek on the other side. It's about here where the metro will join on the western side of the route. A Monterey metro station could be built by raising Barton Street over the railway, with a station entrance dropping onto a metro island platform below. The surrounding area, or even space above the station, could be used for housing and shops. The line would run on the surface as far as Ramsgate, where more houses would push it underground again. An open-air Ramsgate station could be built by building a station box tunnel portal in this block closing Park Road and developing mid-rise along the side of the railway. A pedestrian path could run south, connecting more possible housing. Alice Street would be raised and Ritchie Street would be closed. Sandringham Street, Russell Avenue and Ida Street would be raised. A similar layout to Monterey could be used for a Sans Souci metro station between Sandringham Street and Russell Ave, with adjacent mid-rise development. South of Ida Street, the line would climb on a bridge over the Georges River, the bridge curving west to start to track towards Loftus. The bridge would continue over the Tarrant Point industrial area, which might require demolishing some buildings. The space around the viaduct could be used for further industrial space. The viaduct would land again just after Tarrant Point Road, and a station could be built here with possible development. The line would run west, yes, unfortunately some of these trees will have to go, then briefly climb over Port Hacking Road. The caravan park here might also fall victim, but it could be relocated. There's a funky looking empty concrete covered lot here, which could be a candidate for a North Miranda station. The metro would then dive underground for the final time and curve towards Miranda Railway Station. A station box could be built on the south side, parallel to the existing platforms, in the space of the current car park and Gibbs Street. The high speed line, meanwhile, would continue southwest, initially diving with the metro under the boulevard, but then surfacing again and running on a viaduct over Kingsway, the railway, and a lot of houses until Northwest Arm Road. Just after crossing over the railway line, the line speed would drop back to 160 km per hour. In order to widen the curve, the railway cuts the corner slightly here, so some viaduct piers might fall straight into some people's living rooms. Hunter Street would be closed, with Forest Road rerouted to Northwest Arm Road. The railway runs due west at this point into Royal National Park, where unfortunately a few more trees and a building would need cutting down. I haven't really looked at the gradients here, so a viaduct or embankments might be required. A viaduct would take the railway over both Princess Highway and the Royal National Park tram branch, and would then join the eastern side of the Illawarra Line, and continue as a separate track pair to Waterfall. Curve easing on this section would ideally push the line speed on the high speed section to 160 km an hour. At Waterfall I'd do a big reconfiguration. The high speed line would drop into an Illawarra escarpment tunnel as far as the rule, with a continuous line speed of 160 km an hour. Ramps would however lead from the line to Waterfall station, and connect with the existing line to the coastal towns to allow these towns to also get express services to Sydney. The station would have three platforms, one turn back for suburban trains and one island for south coast local trains in each direction. The Thoreau Tunnel would emerge out of the cliff into Thoreau Yard, and then the down high speed line towards Wollongong would cross under the existing line to create an up fast, up slow, down slow, down fast arrangement. Tracks would be reconfigured at Thoreau to allow trains to terminate in both directions from both lines, 
and to switch from one line to another. The high-speed line would continue in the form of quad tracking as far as Wollongong. The curves just south of Thoreau as far as Winona are probably too sharp to really curvies. Quad track at Bulai could be achieved by closing the car park and bus stop and relocating them, and pushing the high-speed line around the side of the station buildings, with a design speed of whatever the curves are in the area. Winona doesn't appear to be of any heritage value, so it could be rebuilt in part, with a level crossing removal. From here the high-speed trains will run back up as close to 250 km an hour as possible. Balambi could be rebuilt with a level crossing removal and a platform with a less pronounced bulge. At Coromel, the station could be rebuilt entirely with a level crossing removal. The high speed lines could split quite wide around Taraji to avoid needing to rebuild as much. Ferry Meadow is challenging and could require rebuilding platform 2. The quad track would end just north of North Wollongong with high speed trains stopping here. This saves having to rebuild it, Wollongong and Coniston. This will be made possible as no trains would terminate at Wollongong anymore, but I'll touch on that more later. The single track cord connecting the inner and outer Port Kembla lines would be rebuilt as a double track main line connection with line speeds of at least 100 km an hour. Currently, the turnouts to the cord are rated for 25 km an hour at the north end and 50 km an hour at the south end, so this would be a significant saving. A slough would align the Illawarra main line into Udandera station removing the further 50 km an hour crossovers. High speed points with swing nose crossings, as used elsewhere on the high speed line, would allow freight trains to continue to travel at their current line speed of 80 km an hour. From here the Illawarra line would be duplicated as far as DAPTO and would be fitted with ETCS level 1 to allow electric trains to run at 160 km an hour as much as the geometry allows. Level crossings would need to be retimed. This series of work would effectively create a higher to high speed railway from Tempe all the way to Dapto. From North Wollongong to Tempe, the high speed line would be run with 25 kilovolt overhead wires and be signalled with ETCS level 2 cab signalling. This would extend on the classic lines as far as Sydney Terminal, possibly as level 2, otherwise level 1, and to Dapto as level 1 signalling. Timetable wise, high speed trains would run every half hour from Dapto to Sydney, stopping at Unandera, Coniston, Wollongong, North Wollongong, Thoreau, Sydenham, and Sydney Terminal, and every hour from Kayama to Sydney, stopping all to North Wollongong, then to the pattern above. South Coast local trains would run every half hour from Port Kembla to Sydney Terminal, running high speed past Waterfall, and every half hour from Port Kembla to Thoreau only. This creates a 15 minute headway on local trains within Wollongong, 30 minutes to Dapdo, 30 minutes express to Sydney, and 30 minutes to Sydney as a local service. The hourly frequency to Kayama would remain owing to the single track. In an ideal world, it'd all be doubled and electrified to Bomaderry, but there's not much else to talk about with that. Within Sydney, a local express would run every 15 minutes from Waterfall off peak and every 10 on peak. All stops to Hurstville, then Express to Sydenham and Sydney Terminal. Cronulla trains would run every 4 minutes on peak, reducing to 10 minutes off peak, stopping all to Bondi Junction. Rolling stock wise, the high speed line would require its own fleet. D sets could be used on the Wollongong locals to Thoreau. This would require 6 trains and a spare. These wouldn't be much use being longer than 6 cars due to short platforms. The T4 Express could use 8 car D sets possibly 10 car with platform extensions. I don't know how many trains this would need, but maybe 15 or 20 for the peak service, stabled at Mortdale and Waterfall. The time savings of this plan would be massive. The tunnel itself would save about 20 minutes, as per a report from many years ago. Wollongong to Thoreau could be cut to between 5 and 10 minutes. The tunnel would be done in its entirety in only 5 minutes. To Loftus would take another 5 minutes. The entire 20 km new high speed line could be done in 7 minutes, then assuming a slight improvement from Tempe to Central, another 10 minutes. All up, Wollongong to Sydney could take as little as 37 minutes. Currently the express train takes an hour and a half. Even with no traffic, driving to Wollongong takes over an hour. This improvement would be immense and it massively deprioritizes quad tracking the suburban Illawarra line. 
I'm envisaging something like the ICE4 running the high speed services, however possibly slightly more powerful to climb the Illawarra Escarpment Tunnel and to accelerate a bit quicker for Kayama and Wollongong stopping trains. They would of course be dual voltage to run on both 25kV and 1500V overheads. This plan solves both the Illawarra rail capacity crisis and massively improves journey times, making rail the most competitive way of getting to Wollongong and the broader south coast for all manner of journeys. For those of you who'll inevitably ask, oh well, what about the M6, I say it can fuck off. We don't actually need more motorways, and by hopefully shifting large numbers of people onto trains, the existing road space is freed up. Pair that with the absolute shitshow clusterfuck of the M6 Stage 1 project, which pretty much guarantees it won't be extended further in the next decade or so. Thanks for watching. A reminder that members can go watch my bonus alignment creation video. If you enjoyed, leave a comment or like for the algo, and I'll see you in a very special, hopefully, video next fortnight.